So how do you get your first blockchain developer job if you don't have any experience, right? If you're a total beginner, like you're just trying to learn blockchain development. So I've got this question quite a bit over email, and I just got an email this past week uh, with a very similar question. So I'm, I want to answer it here, and hopefully it'll help more people. So I'll just pull it up here and, and read it. Um, it says, after completing your DAP University blockchain course, I'm assuming you're talking about the boot camp, uh, how can one land a job as a blockchain developer? So it says, these positions always expect you to have solid experience. Companies are only looking for the best expertise. So the usual catch-22 situation, it seems. All right, so based on how you phrase this email, I'm going to make a few assumptions, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, my apologies if, if I assume incorrectly, but I'm going to assume you're a beginner, that you either recently learned programming or you have a little bit of programming experience and you just learned blockchain or want to learn blockchain. All right, so the first thing I'll say is companies are not necessarily only looking for the best expertise, all right? Now, companies would love to have the best expertise, um, but there's a few things to think about here. If they're going to get the best expertise, they've got to pay for it. <laughs> the best are always expensive. Um, and if they do have the best expertise, that person's probably not just doing all the work, right? That person is probably going to be making a lot of big decisions and they need other people to delegate tasks to, right? They're not going to be implementing everything because they're, they're limited, right? They only have so much bandwidth, um, and they just can't do it all, right? So that's not the only thing they're hiring for. Um, so don't just assume that that's true. That being said, it certainly can be uh, challenging to get started as a square one beginner, all right? Uh, but this is also true across other fields in software development. It's not just true in blockchain, right? That being said, there are a few ways to start, and I want to help shed some light on those. I'm assuming that you're talking about entering into the job market as a junior developer, right? But you don't necessarily have to. There's just other ways off the top of my head. You know, you could uh, enter as a mid-level or even senior developer if you build your skills up outside of the workforce, which is definitely possible. I basically did this. Um, or you can uh, get started as a freelancer. That's also something that I did. Okay, so I'll talk about each of those, but I'll start with the junior developer route because this seems like what you probably want to do and what a lot of, sorry, what a lot of other people are also trying to do, all right? So let's, um, let's look at that. So if you're starting off as a junior developer, this can definitely be the hardest part, all right? Because, you know, like you said, sometimes you won't see junior developer positions in blockchain just open on the web, right? And, you know, sometimes it's also challenging to convince other people to take a chance on you as a junior developer in blockchain or any other field of software development, okay? So basically, you're kind of in a position where you have to convince someone else that you're the kind of person uh, that they want to take a chance on, all right? And there are a few ways that you can do this. So how would you convince somebody? One of the first ways you can do that is don't take no for an answer. So what does that look like? Well, first of all, if a company doesn't have junior developer positions open, like that doesn't necessarily mean they're not hiring junior developers, all right? You might be able to negotiate a junior developer role. Like I said, if they're just hiring senior talent or you just see regular developer jobs open, um, like I said, if they have really talented people, those talented people can't do all the work and they need to develop, sorry, they need to delegate some tasks to people who aren't as good or as experienced, right? Because um, they just can't do everything. You know, they might be able to actually hire a junior developer who can hustle and is really eager and willing to learn hard, especially someone that they can train up to become more valuable in their company later. Because trust me, a company is going to try to take a long-term view of you, so you should try to take a long-term view of this pursuit that you're going after as well, okay? So, uh, you know, you may not be able to work exactly what you want to work in right away. Like, let's say you want to be a smart contract developer. You know, as a junior, maybe they won't have you working on that, like, immediately, initially, on, like, your first day. But that doesn't mean you can't be productive somewhere else in their technology stack, and you could transition into doing that as you got better and they trusted you and you became more productive in that, like... Um, especially if it's a blockchain project, like <laughs> the fact that you even know anything about blockchain is going to be a huge value in the first place. All right. So how else do you get somebody else to take a chance on you? Well, you know, you be willing to compromise. So, you know, that shows that you're a team player. And if you're, you know, willing to work on something else that's an ecosystem that's not necessarily exactly where you want to start, that's a good way to do it, especially if it gets your foot in the door. So there's, you know, lots of ways to get your foot in the door. Also, just say, there's something to be said for gaining experience because the experience is worth something to you as a junior. So you could like work for less money initially 
uh, just to gain that experience and then work your way up to where you can get paid more when you actually have the value that you can provide in their pipeline. So you could work for less money. You could also work for free, but if you're gonna work for free, honestly, I would recommend just following a different strategy, which I'm about to talk about right now. Those are some things I would say that you could do if you wanna get hired as a junior, you know, as a beginner. Um, but if you don't want to do that, here's more options for you. The next thing that you could do is just get hired as a regular developer or even as a senior developer. Now, unless you are highly intelligent and very talented, you're probably not going to be able to just do this overnight, right? Like you're probably not just going to like learn blockchain in two months and then become a mid to senior level developer. I'd be very surprised. I'm not going to say it can't happen, um, but I would be surprised. So what you want to do is focus on learning for a long time and building uh, things that are really hard out there in the real world, okay? And this will level up your skills over time where you can enter the job market as a mid to senior level developer later without ever having taken a junior developer job. Now, this can be hard and challenging and, and you have to learn a lot on your own. Um, and, you know, like I said, you can focus on building a real world product and put it out there and actually get users and learn things the hard way. You can go to meetups, you can talk to other developers who are working in the real world, have them mentor you and look at your code and tell you what's good, what isn't good. You know, this is a hard way to go, uh, but it, the upside is a lot bigger for you as a developer and can actually uh, be a better career move in some cases if you're willing to stick this out. So here's why. If you took this strategy like while you had a regular job or were, you know, in university or something like that, or, you know, maybe you didn't have to have a job for whatever reason, and you entered into the marketplace at a higher salary later, like financially, it's going to be better for you in the long run. Like, so let's take some basic examples. Like, let's say you enter the job market, you know, as a junior developer making, I don't know, like, let me say $70,000 a year, right? If you waited and learned and got a lot better and entered the job market making a six-figure salary, you know, maybe a year later, and you had a little bit of other income on the side, it's going to be, it's going to make you more money over the long term taking that approach. Here's why. And you might say like, oh no, well, all that lost time that you could have been making $70,000 a year. Yeah, that's for a short period. So if you enter the marketplace at that price point later, you're gonna be able to scale up your income faster starting at that level. And also if you're a junior developer, you're gonna be pegged as a junior developer longer. And let's say, you know, this person, you know, was graduating onto higher six figure roles, it's gonna be take you a lot longer to catch up with that if you started as a junior developer. Not saying it's bad, you can certainly start in junior positions, if especially if you want to get started right away. Uh, but this is another way to do it if you don't just see junior developer jobs open. You can just wait, get better on your own, and enter the marketplace as a mid or even senior level developer. And one way to do this is also to just do some freelancing, okay? So that actually is really the third strategy that I want to talk about. So if you don't see junior developer jobs open, you can be a freelancer. And this is a good way to just try blockchain out without quitting your regular job to see if you like it and also get established in the industry to gain some experience. And you can actually build up freelancing on your resume while you have a regular job. And you could transition into a junior developer role working full time if you just had some experience as a freelancer. Now, even that, you know, you might say is going to have some challenges. How do you get started as a freelancer with no experience? Well, there's two ways that I would see. All right, especially in blockchain. So uh, way number one would be basically to like build some prototypes for people. So I see this happening a lot in blockchain. They're like, hey, we want to try this with the technology. We're kind of just experimenting. We have a cer certain fixed budget and we want to try this. We want you to build us some smart contracts and, you know, create a user interface for it. And, you know, maybe it's an investor pitch. It's, there's, there's lots of reasons they could do it. I've done this quite a bit. Um, and that's a way that a, be a beginner could do this. As long as you're competent, you know JavaScript, you know smart contracts, you know, you can use the blockchain, you can build something for a company like this. I've even seen people who are beginners take over blockchain projects like at their job, like as the leader, just because they knew something about blockchain and could build prototypes like this, okay? So uh, that's one way you could do as a freelancer is to be, build prototypes, build small projects, stuff that doesn't have like a huge consequence down the road, right? Like you're not going to be a big architect on a massive system probably initially, but this is a way that a, you know, a junior responsibility would be fine. So another way would be to work for another uh, freelancer who's like a mid to senior level developer, right? Just like I talked about earlier, they're going to be 
very experienced and be able to solve problems mentally and see the entire implementation without doing the entire implementation um, just because they can only work so fast. And they could probably benefit from, you know, delegating tasks to a junior developer. Now, like I said, you may not be able to work initially on the exact part of the stack that you want to, but like I said, that experience um, is definitely valuable if it's a part of a blockchain project, even if it's not doing the exact same thing that you want to be doing initially, okay? Um, so that's another way you can get started as a freelancer is work for another freelancer. And so how do you find these kinds of people? I mean, you could just get creative. You get on Upwork and find other freelancers and see if they want to sub out uh, projects to you at a lower hourly rate. You know, you could start very cheap just to get started, just get your foot in the door and then raise your rates pretty quickly over time. That's one thing that's nice about freelancing is it's a lot easier to ask for a raise just by raising your hourly rate. You don't have to negotiate with a boss or a manager. You don't have this single point of failure, right? If you have multiple clients, you just raise all their rates, um, you know, individually over time. So I um, hope that's helpful, right? Those are some ways that you can get started uh, in blockchain, get your first job as a square one beginner, you know, just fresh off the chopping block. Um, so however you start, like whatever you decide to do, there's one key thing that you definitely need before you even go down any path, all right? And that one thing is a killer portfolio project, all right? So why is that? The first thing is building a portfolio project solidifies your skills and it's going to get them ready for you to actually take a job and be productive, all right? And two, doing that is going to also accomplish the purpose of showing other people what you can do, that you actually possess the skills that they need um, to hire you as a blockchain developer and actually get value, okay? And when you do this, you want to take your project and open source it. You know, put the code on GitHub, deploy the uh, actual project to production so people can use it, play around with it. And honestly, it just needs to be something that they can see that you've done it for real. Like it's hard to fake your skills when your code is out there in the wild and has your, you know, fingerprint on it. All right. So um, that's like step zero before you even try <laughs> to pursue any of these other strategies. Okay. Um, so... Once you've done that, you also want to adjust your mindset and try to get your focus off just like this immediate result that you're looking for, right? You don't don't just focus on that first job, right? Because you have an entire career uh, potentially ahead of you after just that first job. And you want to think about the long-term benefit, right? If blockchain is a trend and is growing, um, then you want to think about the long-term opportunity for you, not just that first job, all right? Because where you go... Um, is going to affect that, right? And how you do it. And also don't get discouraged if like you don't just get this immediate result that you're looking for. Think about the long term. Um, you definitely have to be persistent. Don't just try one approach. Try many approaches. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't just apply for one job. You know, you might need to apply for 10 jobs. And like I said, don't focus so much on the short term. Think about the long term. Um, this is exciting. This is fun. You know, think about your entire career, not just this first job. But also, like, definitely, uh, before you even think about looking for a job, you need that portfolio piece, all right? Uh, if you want to learn how to build a portfolio piece, uh, if you want to learn more about how to find a job as a blockchain developer, you enjoy my free training, all right? Uh, head on over to dappinuniversity.com. I teach you some strategies about how to, you know, uh, monetize your blockchain skills and market yourself. And I've also, uh, I'll also show you how to build a real-world project, a portfolio project, inside my blockchain developer boot camp, all right? So check that out. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, click the like button down below. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.